Pretty neat stuff. Uh, what did you think of that trumpet playing? Well, I, was, yeah, I loved how he's kind of grooving back and forth. Yeah, he's, he's kind of moving his hips and getting into she. it, you know. He could be a she. Uh, we, wanna, we don't want to call them he. You could call them she if you like. I tend to call them he just because I'm a he, but uh, if you're a she, call them she. Whatever floats your boat. Whatever, yeah, sure. Um, you know, one of the most amazing fields in robots today in Japan is the cutting edge. Um, uh, you know, uh, these robots not only look like they're doing something uh, that we humans do, like play the trumpet, but uh, they have real technology like that uh, Toyota Partner robot. It's got artificial lips and lungs, and it can. It's not just pre-record music. Wow. In other words, it's actually making the. So it's actually playing. It's actually trumpet. playing the, the the trumpet. And um, you know, when the latest Toyota Partner robot was unveiled, I don't know if you saw it. Uh, it can play the violin. Did you see that one? Is a robot orchestra far behind? A robot orchestra is not far behind. In fact, some of these uh, Toyota robots uh, were in a marching band together. One of them went solo. He did a solo career move, and now he's a receptionist robot. His name is Robina. Uh, anyway, he, he's amazing. He's down in Toyota City at the showroom of Toyota down there. The next thing we want to uh, look at is androids. Are you into androids? Into androids. Yeah. Well, I know about androids. You know You're about talking android? about robots that look just like human beings, That's right? That's right. Robots that look just like you and me. They've got artificial hair, uh, artificial skin, uh, and they're like the film uh, Blade Runner. You know the I science see. fiction film Blade yes. Runner, that classic that's full of uh, androids? Where robots are masquerading. That's right. They're called replicants. Society. Well, they're kind of coming to life now I in see. Japan. Uh, recently, I had the chance to sit down with uh, the android wizard himself, Dr. Hiroshi Ishiguro from Osaka University, and he told me uh, about his research into androids. Now, I know you're interested in something called android science. Could you explain what is android science? We take our approach from uh, brain science and cognitive science and psychology. But, uh, you know, the brain science and psychology uh, were well, focusing on the uh, particular functions in the brain and the, we need a more systematic approach that systematic means uh, you know how the you know uh, the functions they collaborate each other and how the we can well the generate the human like movement and the human likeness and the, by building android the, I believe uh, you know we we can get some new knowledge, the how we can integrate the uh, many pieces, um, how we can integrate the uh, brain functions in our brains, and, and the how we can generate the more human-like movement. And, and so um, I think uh, the an building Android is another approach to understand what is humans. That is the Android science. Interesting. So we can learn more about humans by building robots and androids. Right. Okay. Uh, what about uh, an android you made called uh, Replie? Uh, could you tell us a little bit about Replie? So Replie is the, uh, my second android. That I decided to make an uh, you know, adult android. And, uh, and the, the Replie is the, uh, well, the copy of uh, existing uh, uh, newscasters. And the robot has uh, more than 40 actuators, and the robot has many sensors. And the, in the World Expo, we have displayed the robot, and the Android, and, uh, and the robot could have uh, some uh, simple the communication with visitors. Did you make any other uh, androids based on real people? Yeah, actually, I'm the, uh, I made the, my copy. A copy of yourself right. in Android form. Mm -hmm. So my idea was to install the uh, teleoperation functions for the Android. If I make my copy, right, the, I can teleoperate the robot and I don't need to go the anywhere. Well, because, uh, you know, I can send my copy and I can access through the Internet. Stay in one place and remote control a copy of yourself. Right, exactly. That's amazing, just like science fiction. Do you think um, androids will one day be so lifelike, so much like a human being, that we cannot tell the difference? Yes, that, that kind of thing happens already and for the Ripley and the Gemini. But uh, you know, just for the particular situation and the particular purpose, right? And so the that is very important point. You know, well, if we have a just a short the conversations, you know, usually, well, it's quite difficult, well, to distinguish which is which, right? But uh, if we spend uh, uh, one hour and one day and one year together, you know, it's easy to find what is that.
So it's easier to find the uh, the flaws or the um, the errors or the uh, differences between the android and the human being if we talk longer with it. Okay, interesting. And what about apart from scientific research, uh, what uh, jobs or roles do you think androids can have in society? Yeah, basically, you know, the, my interest is to understand what is humans by building Android. But, uh, you know, my collaborators, I'm working with the companies, and they're very serious uh, to develop a commercial version of the Android. And I, I guess, you know, the, they want to develop uh, the Androids for the simple communication tasks, like uh, receptionist or some uh, tour guide or something like that. Speaking of receptionist uh, androids, we have one here at the Kennedy Center for the Japan Culture Hyperculture Festival, um, Actroid, uh, from a group that you work with, uh, Kokoro. Um, this is uh, wearing a kimono and uh, greeting visitors. Well, Dr. Ishiguro, thank you very much for being on the show. Welcome. Amazing stuff from Dr. Hiroshi Ishiguro. Well, Japan is a robot powerhouse, but countries like the United States are making great strides to compete in this growing industry of robots. Uh, with a focus on science and technology, uh, robotics programs in this country are starting to take off in high schools and colleges nationwide. Joining me now is robotics coach and teacher Gail Drake to talk about this phenomenon. Gail, welcome to the program. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for coming. Um, now, please tell me about the robotics program that you're uh, participating in. Battlefield High School is a technology high school. We specialize in multiple technologies and specifically information technology. Our students, our faculty, and our administration have embraced robotics. Okay. Absolutely love it. We are a four-year-old school with our third year into robotics. At this point in time, we already have five different robotics teams, one that competes in the first robotic challenge and four that compete in the first technology challenge. Okay. Uh, first year into first robotics challenge, we were the world champions. Wow, congratulations. And for, thank you, it was an exciting year. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about the goal of the program? The ultimate goal is to expose students to different areas of technology, and particularly into those technologies that we feel are going to be leaders in the world. Robotics being one of those technologies and engineering being another. And in the program, we focus on how do you use your different areas in the um, education to be successful. A lot of geometry, trigonometry, and calculus to do your design work. Uh, when you're actually building them, it's almost like a physics playground. Okay. In addition to that, they learn how to do technical writing to write some engineering notebooks and to do their design specs. And then they need to do advertising so that corporations will sponsor them because it is all self-funded. Really? So they learn to write to companies. Okay. They learn to create websites. They learn to create multi media presentations. Last year the team took first place in website design. Amazing, congratulations. So looking for another win there this year. Yeah, Excellent. well it's really neat to hear that uh, writing and advertising and marketing is also part of this program because in the future when they become, if they become engineers, of course that self-advertising is so important. Uh, so uh, that's really neat the way they're combining engineering skills and real world communication skills. And project management skills. And project so they're putting skills. the pieces together all the way through the that's aspects. That's really neat. Well, you know, we followed uh, Team 194 from Battlefield High School as they prepared for the Virginia State competition, the first tech challenge. Let's take a look at their story. Robots are a part of our everyday lives. They're in hospitals perfecting surgical procedures. And they're in factories producing cars and other cool stuff. Robots are taking over. No, I'm not talking about world domination. What I mean is the field of robotics is growing, and that means we are going to need scientists and engineers to compete in this growing industry. That's why some of us are jumping on board and building our own robots. Hi, I'm Bobby. Hi, I'm Andrew. Hi, my name is Alex. Hi, I'm Roya. Hi, I'm NG. Hi, my name is Alex. Hi, my name is Thomas. <laughs> We're students at Battlefield High School in Prince William County, Virginia, and we're competing in a statewide robotics tournament called Quad Quandry for the First Tech Challenge. Quad Quandry is a game of strategy. Teams have two minutes to score by placing three-inch PVC rings on goals of different lengths. Sounds easy, right? Wrong. Getting behind the controller and driving these robots is no easy task.